Logic Pro 11 has just been released and there's a whole slew of new features that are here to make your life tons easier, including a bunch of helpful AI tools. In this video, I'll break down all of the biggest updates, how to use them, and what my thoughts are after using them for a little bit. Let's hop in. If you're looking for another great way to up your Logic game, I've created 10 free vocal presets that only use stock plugins that you can download below. Go check them out. First up, we'll cover the new stem separation tool. Stem separation tools have been all the rage lately as AI has made it possible to separate normal music track into its different sections. This can be immensely helpful for remixes, isolating vocal parts, sampling drum parts, and much, much more. To use this stem separation tool, load in a fully mixed track, right click, go to processing, and stem separation. Logic will then prompt you with a dialog box asking which parts you'd like to include. I recommend including all of them. And yes, that quickly it will create the stem separation track. I've actually never had this take longer than 20 seconds, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. You can solo each individual track and hear each part by itself. Pretty little heart. As you can hear, each part is separated like it said. The audio quality is pretty good, but sometimes Logic does fail to get everything perfect. Occasionally, you'll hear parts from one section bleed into the other, and other times soloing one of the stems sounds weird without all of the other stems in there. But in my testing, the stems are absolutely good enough to use for, say, a vocal remix or sampling a drum kit. Just make sure that you're actually sampling the parts that sound good and not those ones that have the bleed or sound weird by themselves. I give it a thumbs up. Moving right along here, we're going to get into the main part of this Logic update, which includes AI Studio Session Players. Logic has released an AI keyboard player, an AI bassist, and an updated AI drummer that will instantly create MIDI tracks of your song. Along with these new robot musicians, Logic has recorded six new basses to sample, finally, and three new pianos. Let's go! A total of this update takes around 10 gigabytes for all of these new sounds. Let's first dive into the updated drummer track because it will be the most familiar for those that have used Logic in the past. Once you load in a drummer track, you can double click on it and see that the interface has indeed been updated. Just like before, you'll be able to select your genre and style of drummer by clicking into here. You can also change over to the keyboardist or bassist by using the same interface. If you want to change the drum kit sound itself, all you have to do is simply select another from the library tab over here. You can hear the pattern hasn't changed, but the sounds have. These two knobs represent the complexity and the intensity of the track, which is very similar to what we had before, just not on that graph. Lowering the complexity knob will usually take away some instrument hits and make the beat simpler. The intensity knob is more related to the velocity of the MIDI and the loudness of the hits themselves. Just like before, you can click on these instrument icons to either include them or exclude them from the groove. But now we're getting into some things that are a little bit different. But now we've got a groove selector that we can use to fine tune our decided drum pattern. If you click into any of these grooves, you can change any of the presets to change up the drum pattern. All of these are preset patterns that we can just automatically change our drummer to. These groove patterns also work the same for the new AI bassist and keyboardist. On the right hand side, you can now change the fill amount and the fill complexity instead of just having the fill knob like we had before. We also have the swing knob here if we want to add some swing. If we hop into the second panel called details, we'll find out more about our instrument. This page will change depending on which drummer type you have selected. For example, with acoustic drum tracks, you'll get an option to add ghost notes, which is super cool and add some humanistic realism. For electronic drum kits, you'll get a complexity meter and phase variation that you can use for each individual instrument. But to the right of here, you'll find my newest favorite feature in Logic Drummer, and this is for any drum kit you choose and also works for the keyboardist and the bassist. It's a push and pull knob, which will move your drum beat either slightly past the grid or slightly before the grid. It gives you way more control of the groove of a song and the feeling it has. Check it out. If we pull it, our drum kit will be after the click. If we push it, it will be before. Really great for adding some groove and some swing that wasn't there before. Once again, these knobs are also available for the keyboard robot man and the AI bass. We also now have a humanized knob that will make your drum track less perfect and more human. We also have a dynamics knob which will add more of a volume difference between your loudest and softest notes over here or make them all the same at 0%. And then on the last tab, we have a really cool feature which is a manual section. We can literally punch in the drum beat we have in our heads to this part and Logic will take care of the rest. Now let's look into the bassist and keyboardist and see how they're different than the good old fashioned drummer. We can change the bassist or keyboardist by clicking here 
going into type and clicking bass player or keyboard player. Or we can just create a new track like normal. Loading the main panel, you'll see a lot of similarities. You still have the complexity and intensity knob like before. The groove pattern that I mentioned, the fill amount, fill complexity, and swing. Where it's different here is in the middle panel where you'll get the melody, octaves, and phrasing. These all affect the end bass sound in different ways. But to get this bass playing the actual chords you want, you'll want to hop into the new global chords that Logic has to offer. You'll notice that when I loaded in this bass track, you'll see that these chords popped up up here. If we click down on this tab here, you'll see that we have these new global chords above. Now, if you wanted to, you can go into each individual region on your bass and put these chords in or use a chord progression preset by going into chords and chord progressions. If we do that on the region, you'll see all of these new chords right here, and they're different than the global chords. I recommend using the global chords though. It's gonna make things way easier when you're trying to coordinate all of these AI players. On these global chords, we can also go into some presets by right-clicking here, clicking chord progressions, and choosing one of these. Notice that these chord progressions are all dependent on the key that you have set up here. Since we're in C major and we choose a one, five, six, four, that means we'll have C, G, A minor, F. And if we play our bass part, you'll notice that it's playing the root note of each of these chords. We can make that more complex by adding in melody, adding in more notes, maybe even some octaves, and maybe even making the phrasing longer so the notes last more. Just like before, we can go into details, add in some more humanistic things like dead notes and slides, even change the feel like before, humanize it, dynamics, even adding some pickup hits. These global chords and this functionality can be great for music producers who don't know that much about music theory or are getting started. And because we have these global chords up here, we can add in a keyboard player and it will play along with these chords just like the bass will. If we want to change these global chords to be something different than the original presets, we have to ungroup the chords first, and then we can type in any chord that we want to for any part of the song. Let's add in D minor right here. We'll put in D minor, and then for this chord, I want to maybe make it an F. I'll double click on it, click F, and go from there. If you have a complex chord progression, this process is a bit cumbersome and janky. It's not super well thought out, but that could change with a future update, which is why I'm gonna give this a thumbs to the middle. But once you do have your global chords, all of your AI instruments will follow it, so that makes it easier. Check out what happens when I add in this AI keyboardist with this same chord progression. That's all AI, the drummer, the bassist, and the keyboard player. What's really cool about both the bass and keyboard parts is you can change out any MIDI instrument you want to. So say you have a nice preset you have in Serum, maybe a little pluck sound, you can add it in and it will automatically play those same notes. Already really cool. Now there's much more to show with getting detailed with all the knobs and settings you can adjust for both the bassist and keyboardist, but I've given a pretty good overview to get you started. It's really gonna take you going in and messing around with yourself to see what it can really do for you. I'll get my overall final thoughts on it at the very end. And the last big update of Logic 11 is a new AI distortion plugin called Chroma Glow. Here it is, looks pretty fancy and cool, and it's got some good distortion settings. This was made specifically to emulate the analog warmth from overdriven signals, and I think it does a pretty damn good job. My recommendation is to use it in moderation because at high levels it sounds pretty bad, but it's got a really nice vintage feel when you use it with maybe 20%, even 50% and below for sure. Logic has also released a bunch of other improvements with this update, and I'll list my favorite three that I was excited about. Logic has introduced some improved MIDI force legato options and added two more that we can use. It's changed the default recording style from AIFF to WAVE, and it's also added a bunch of new producer packs that are available, including one from the jelly wristed legend himself, Corey Wong. You can download those in the loop section. Now here are some of my thoughts about the update. This update is a big one and it packs a lot of ease of life features and things that just make your music making experience easier. If you don't know much about music theory or are just getting into music making, this update is 
awesome. All of the AI players make it easy to make sweet ass music with no knowledge at all. One of my goals as a producer is to make music production more accessible to the average Joe. That's part of the reason I made those free vocal preset packs I mentioned at the beginning, which you can still download below. However, as a professional producer, I personally won't be using these AI tools much except for maybe the drummer. I've been doing this long enough that I know exactly what I want to hear in my head, and the AI doesn't make it super easy to play exactly what I got going on up there. I'm gonna stick to playing it myself on my MIDI keyboard, on my guitar, or on my bass so that I can nail it the first time. But even though I won't be using all the features all the time, I'm super excited that Logic has released these updates, and I'm pumped up to see where the next year of AI production madness continues to take us. Like this video if it helped you out, go down Download those free vocal presets and subscribe for more music production videos just like this one.